One of the biggest offices in the world for 12,000 employees has no one conditioner. Sounds like a joke, but it is not. Steve Jobs hated air conditioners and fans. He wanted the new office to breathe natural without opening the windows. They designed the Apple Ring to let in outside air, adjusting to wind and all. all. So it feels like the building has a fresh air all the time. They even consulted with the Formula One experts about airflow. In this episode, I'll tell you 25 unexpected facts about Apple Park. You don't have a lot of time, so click on the highlights. Have you noticed that on the mail icon, the envelope looks like real paper and even has Apple Park address? And guess what on the Apple Maps? A slice of Apple Park. Hola, children, hello. Apple Park is number six of the most expensive building in the world. The top five are all money-making giants, but Apple? They just built a fancy office for themselves. Five billion dollars the price for the office. Sounds like an amazing amount, but if you compare it to Apple's revenue last year, it's less than 2%. That doesn't seem too much, right? If Apple Park was a skyscraper, it would be twice as tall as Bush Khalifa and has 340 floats. But usually employees don't like to waste time waiting for the elevator and prefer to use Zoom. So in Apple Park, they made sure that every employee can easily meet each other in person, so... The main building is even bigger than Pentagon. The Apple Park is a perfect mile around, so you can walk it in just 15 minutes like a stadium track, but with a much better landscapes. Too bad there is no treadmills on the roof. HP is a special place for Steve Jobs. And this land is kind of special to me. When he was a teen, he simply called Bill Hewitt and asked him for details for a project. And bam, he got a summer job. In HP, he felt like a kid in a candy store. Later, when HP was selling its land, Jobs bought it like he had won a golden ticket. Do you ever wonder why it's called Apple? Jobs was on his wild Apple-only diet, thinking it made him not smell. Spoiler, people around him strongly disagreed with it. And that Macintosh we all love? It's an Apple type. Who knew? Do you know why Park? Jobs liked to work and brainstorming at the time. He first got the Apple Park vibe from London Hyde Park, where he and the chief designer Johnny Ive used to spend time during their trips to London. And fun fact, that land used to be all fruit fields back in the day. Jobs wanted Apple Park to blend right into California vibes. So he got this architect, Lori Olin, who did stand for Slaves Cap on board. They went all out, shaping it from Jobs' memories and even selected specific trees that even changed the nursery industry in California. There were real apple trees there. It might be a big apple garden with walls. Jobs was so into keeping the landscape clean and he put even massive parking lot and the roads underground. Can you imagine? He wanted it out of sight to keep everything natural. Even traffic lights look like the button on your Mac. Apple Park wasn't always gonna be a circle. Check out these prototypes. Or, oh, and get this, Jobs showed a clover design to his son, who said it looks like mm, men body parts, if you know what I mean. No surprise they changed it after that. Apple Park has the largest solar roof on the planet. It provides 75% of energy consumption of the whole office. Any glass has a green tint. It is due to the iron in the sand. Jobs demanded the perfect natural color for caps, providing the shade for the building. No compromise. So I've team got creative. Paint the back white, stick it on the white metal, and even add a hint of pink. And guess what? It worked? The other challenge with the glass caps was to avoid water spots after raining. Have you noticed that sometimes when you try to pour a coffee, it spills everywhere instead of the cup? That's called the teapot effect. Some smart guys figure them <laughs> <laughs> Some smart guys figure out how to deal with it in 1997 and Apple bore their tricks. So no more messy coffee spills on the glass. The yoga room is covered with a stone exactly like in Job's favorite hotel in Yosemite, where he got married in 1991. Apple team found the right stone from the Cary in Kansas, carefully distressed like a pair of jeans and put it on the wall. California is one of the most earthquake-prone zones on the Earth. To keep the building from collapsing like a crystal house of cards, 
Apple team came out with a floating structure. Apple Park has just one place to grab the food, on purpose. Why? Jobs believed if everyone bumped to each other at lunch, they would chat and come up with a killer ideas. He was all about those random chats. Jobs even wanted to make fewer restrooms, but others talked him out of it. Apple Park patented a round pizza box. I mean, it's apple, but for pizza, it's perfectly shaped for the pie and has these tiny holes on the top to keep the crust crisp. No more soggy slice and more circles. Job Theater, amazing building from the outside, but it's got his massive secret underground. That's where they used to do all the big Apple presentations. Remember? Dark room, long screen behind, and full audience attention. Up till 2020, that was the spot. Then they mixed it up with all other cool places around the park. Apple hacks the fire code. Usually fire stairs require heavy doors that reduce the spread of the fire. But Jobs was inspired by the way fire stairs work on yacht and suggested using water mist fire protection. And guess what? This absolutely satisfied the local fire department. You won't find any unofficial pics from Apple Park, seriously. Only the ones they gave the green light to. There is a story where an employee's daughter published a video with the sensitive information from the Apple campus, and the developer was fired. Rule her rules. Ironically, developers don't like this open office setup. They are more quiet type and not into all this social buzz. Once you have worked from home in pajamas, even the best office in the world can't compare. If you didn't try, try it. After reading a tons for this project, Isaacson's biography on jobs was a game changer, seriously. It's like, it's like, who's bigger nerd, Jobs or Isaacson? The stuff he digs up isn't anywhere else, mind-blowing. In September, there is a new book about Musk by the same author. I'm so curious about this juicy detail he forgot. Check the link I dropped below and let me know if I should make a video about it. Subscribe to see how the world is changing with technology. Catch you on the next video. Bye!